and give me five dollars and I'll bet your life. <laughs> Matters tab to Judge Lau, appearance by the state, please. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Sue Opper and Leslie Bayhe, appearing for the state of Wisconsin. Thank you. And for Mr. Brooks. Daryl Brooks appears in person in custody with attorneys Anna Keyes and Jeremy Perry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. And we are here on a criminal complaint, a complaint that's now been filed. Uh, Mr. Perry, will Mr. Brooks acknowledge that he has received a copy of that complaint and will he waive its reading in open court here today? We have received copies of the criminal complaint. We waive formal reading. Thank you. Um, it may at some point uh, be relevant, but the address on the complaint is accurate. That's right. Thank you. And Mr. Brooks, I have reviewed a copy of this criminal complaint. I will find it does state probable cause as to each of the five charges before you. You're charged in count one with first degree intentional homicide. That's a class A felony. And that uh, has a maximum possible penalty of it being sentenced to uh, imprisonment for life. That's for victim A. Count two, first degree intentional homicide regarding victim B uh, is a class A felony. Again, the maximum possible sentence is a sentence to imprisonment for life. Count three, first degree intentional homicide regarding victim C is again a class A felony, and that's punishable by a sentence uh, to imprisonment for life. Count four, first degree intentional homicide regarding victim D, again, is a class A felony, and that's punishable by a sentence of uh, to imprisonment for life. Lastly, count five, first degree intentional homicide regarding victim E is a class A felony that is punishable uh, by a sentence to imprisonment for life. As those are felonies, you're entitled to have uh, counsel. You're entitled to have also a preliminary hearing. And I, again, have found probable cause to each of the five counts upon my review of the Pleading. So we will turn to Attorney Opper uh, for her bail recommendation. Thank you, sir. Uh, as to bail recommendation, Your Honor, I'd like the court to be aware of a prior criminal history as it relates to Mr. Brooks. I can advise the court uh, he has arrest record from three states to include Wisconsin, Nevada, and Georgia. Uh, starting with uh, the state of Wisconsin, the record begins in 2000. Uh, there was a conviction in that year for substantial battery, party to a crime. A prison sentence was imposed but stayed for three years probation and six months condition time. 2002 conviction for possession of marijuana as a repeat offender, sentenced to 50 days in the House of Correction. 2003 misdemeanor conviction for resisting obstructing, sentenced to 20 days in the House of Correction. 2005, there's an arrest from Langlade County. Ultimately, he was convicted of a county ordinance violation for disorderly conduct. What's uh, remarkable about that is that he failed to pay the fine, so he was ordered to serve 30 days in jail on the non payment. 2009, Manitowoc County conviction for obstructing an officer. Sentence to two days jail time served. 2010 conviction from Wood County, Wisconsin. He was convicted of the offense of strangulation slash suffocation with other charges of battery and criminal damage to property dismissed and read in. The court ordered a withheld sentence for three years probation. That probation was revoked. And on August 1 of 2011, he was sentenced to 11 months jail. 2012, he was convicted uh, at the same time on two separate files in Milwaukee County. Uh, first file was a, a charge for possession of marijuana as a repeat offender, sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction. The second file, he was convicted of misdemeanor bail jumping and misdemeanor possession of THC, also sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction, concurrent to the other case and concurrent to each other. In May of 2012, there was a conviction for resisting obstructing. He was sentenced to 37 days jail consecutive to uh, the earlier sentence imposed in April of that year. 
He's currently pending on two charges in Milwaukee County. Uh, 2020 CF 2550, he's charged with two counts, second degree recklessly endangering safety while armed, and one count of felon in possession of a firearm. The date of that offense, or excuse me, all three offenses is July 24 of 2020. It's believed he was uh, arrested shortly after that incident and remained in custody in the Milwaukee County Jail until released on bail there for uh, reasons of a speedy trial violation on March 3 of 2021. Bail at that time was lowered from uh, $7,500 cash bail to $500 cash bail. In that case, Your Honor, it is alleged that he got into a fight with his nephew. Uh, the defendant uh, fired one round from a handgun toward the vehicle that his nephew was in. The vehicle was occupied by another person and that uh, accounts for the two charges of reckless endangering safety. The next day he was taken into custody and the residence where he was located, uh, he was found to have a loaded nine millimeter handgun just a few feet away from him. The handgun was previously reported stolen Again, he was a convicted felon on that date, so that accounts for the third charge. He's also currently pending in Milwaukee County case number 21 CF 4596. That has a date of offense of November 2, 2021. He's charged there with resisting, obstructing, felony bail jumping, second degree reckless endangering safety in a domestic violence situation domestic DC and domestic battery. The allegations in that case, Your Honor, are that he struck the mother of his child in the face with a closed fist. Then as she was walking away from him, he intentionally ran her over with his vehicle. The vehicle in that matter described as what's believed to be the same maroon 2010 Ford Escape used in the allegations in this case. Police went to his home and found him getting out of that Ford Escape. The defendant ignored their commands to stop and he tried to run into the house before he was apprehended. There's a long history of flight, obstructing, bail jumping type behavior, Your Honor. It's remarkable that these are violations all around the state of Wisconsin, not just his home county of Milwaukee, but we had convictions from Wood County, Manitowoc and Langlade in Northern Wisconsin. I'd like the court to be aware of a record from the state of Georgia, excuse me, I'm sorry, Nevada. We'll go to Nevada first. Uh, that happened. The first conviction was from December 11th of 2006. He was found guilty at trial of a misdemeanor count for obstructing an officer, was sentenced to jail in Nevada. Also on that same day of uh, December 11th, 2006, he pled guilty to a domestic battery as a misdemeanor, and the court there ordered a suspended sentence. On March 16th of 2007, he pled guilty to statutory sexual seduction, a felony. The court ordered a suspended sentence for 36 months probation. He was also ordered to register on the Nevada Sex Offender Registry. He is currently uh, noted to be non-compliant with that registration requirement. On June 23rd of 2016, he was charged with a sex offender registry violation, first offense. He failed to appear in court and a warrant remains active for his arrest. So he currently has an outstanding warrant for his arrest in the state of Nevada. In Georgia, Your Honor, the record reflects a May 27, 2021 arrest for misdemeanor battery with a designation of family violence. While it is not clear if he was convicted, he did recently uh, remark to a court official in this county that he had served a six month jail sentence in Georgia. So, uh, we have not been able to verify if that was a conviction, but certainly there was a uh, confinement in conjunction with that arrest. He has no contact with the criminal justice system in Waukesha County or the district attorney's office. He does have a 
outstanding paternity case that's been pending since 2003 uh, in which he was adjudicated as the father of a, of a juvenile. And there's been uh, returned court appearances over the years based on failure to pay child support. Uh, the court should know that uh, a warrant or capius was issued for Mr. Brooks in this paternity case on at least eight occasions. He has been sentenced to jail on several prior occasions for failing to pay that child support. And on one occasion, he had his Huber privileges revoked related to one of those jail sentences. That was back in 2009. Most recently, there was a warrant issued for his arrest in that non-support civil case on August 2 of 2021. Uh, Judge Maxwell signed an order for him to serve a 120-day jail sentence. Uh, Mr. Brooks did make a court appearance in that matter on November 16th of 2021, so just last week, one week ago. And uh, he was released at that time because, again, he had explained to the court, provided an explanation that uh, the reason he had not uh, made his child support payments is because he was serving that jail sentence in Georgia. So the court released him that day and ordered him back for a court appearance in the paternity case for December. So judge, just based on his prior record, we obviously have very significant concerns about Mr. Brooks' uh, flight history and willingness to obey the orders of the court. But we have to factor in, obviously, uh, the allegations in this case as well. And obviously, I don't need to state uh, Mr. Brooks is facing five consecutive life sentences if he's convicted on all counts in this complaint. I wish to notify the court sadly that today we learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. I can advise the court that I am aware, I've been made aware through investigators that there are other individuals in critical condition. I think we remark on the number of actual injured parties in our complaint, it exceeds 60 people. There's a number of other charges that we are reviewing and considering, but certainly at the very least, we do intend to file a six count of intentional homicide uh, maybe Friday or maybe early next week, depending on uh, when we can accomplish that. Certainly if we have any other deaths resulting from this incident, additional counts of homicide will be filed. We didn't charge bail jumping. Obviously we could have. Um, we uh, have focused our efforts to date on the immediate concern and that involves the loss of life uh, that is alleged to have occurred through the conduct of Mr. Brooks. I want this court to know, and I think the court has read the complaint, indicated you've read the complaint. There are not words to describe the risk that this defendant presents to our community. Not only flight risk, but the dangerousness that he presents, his history of violence, and the allegations in this complaint where uh, it is stated plainly that on several occasions, he was told to stop by police officers. They risked their own safety to try and step in front of the car to stop him. Everything was done to get him to stop. And he just simply continued down the roadway, causing death and destruction in his path. So I am advocating for a significant cash bail, Your Honor. I'm asking for $5 million cash bail. I know that's uh, a large amount of money, but I think it is warranted on this history. And I think it's uh, warranted when the court considers if convicted, Mr. Uh, Brooks will spend the rest of his life in prison. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Perry. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, when this court determines what amount of monetary bail is reasonable and necessary to assure Mr. Brooks' appearance in court, I guess at today's hearing, the only thing I would add for the court's consideration is that Mr. Brooks is financially indigent, does qualify for public defender representation, 
and that that individual circumstance uh, must be taken into account. Does that conclude your argument? It does. Thank you, sir. So, uh, first of all, let's get to conditions of bail. Um, the monetary portion is called bail. There are conditions, though, in bail. And first, I am going to order, sir, level four monitoring through WCS if you do post bail. You're not to leave the confines of the state of Wisconsin. You are only to be released on a business day during business hours. This is the highest ranking sheriff, deputy sheriff. Uh, I would like your opinion. I, I, I would like the sheriff's department to notify WCS if he bails out that he's to immediately go over to WCS. So would it be asking too much if I had somebody from the sheriff's department contact during regular business hours, WCS, to let them know that he's being released? Then I'm ordering then that the sheriff's department contact immediately upon uh, Mr. Brooks walking out the door, if that should happen, that he's on his way to WCS, which is literally a block away. If uh, that does not happen, I want to make sure that uh, people are aware that he did not get on the GPS monitoring device, which I am ordering. I'm ordering him to pay for that as well. Again, be, he's only to be released on a business day during business hours with the Sheriff's Department agreeing to contact WCS. If WCS does not uh, have Mr. Brooks uh, come in with a matter of minutes, I would like them, I'm ordering them to then contact the Sheriff's Department of that. I am ordering, sir, that you not operate a motor vehicle. You may not possess any dangerous weapons or firearms. Uh, you are not to have contact with the families listed in the uh, victim identification sheet. You are to only disseminate that information to your lawyers. Those are all the conditions of bail. If you violate any condition of bail, including failing to return to court, separate bail jumping charges could be issued against you. In reviewing 969.01 uh, of the Wisconsin statutes and 969.001 that talk about bail and release, um, the statute reads that there should be reasonable conditions designated to assure his or her appearance in court, Mr. Brooks protect members of the community from serious bodily harm. And those are the conditions that I just laid out. The bail may be imposed at or after the initial appearance. There should be a reasonable basis to believe that bail is necessary to assure appearance in court. Some of the uh, things to be considered by the court uh, with the conditions of bail are the number and gravity of the offenses, the potential penalty uh, the defendant faces, uh, whether or not the allegations are violent in nature, the prior record of the uh, defendant, character and strength of the evidence which has been presented to the court where the defendant is already on bail or subject to other release conditions in other pending cases, and whether or not there's any violations of those uh, release conditions. Uh, in reviewing the criminal complaint, the allegations are such that I read that two detectives opined that this was an intentional act, that the uh, vehicle seemed to swerve into, uh, into <coughs> individuals, actually at one point trying to avoid other vehicles, uh, that the detectives are listed as Detective Casey and Detective to Sony, who again opined that the actions they observed in their opinion uh, were intentional. Uh, we now have five. Attorney Opper informed us of a sixth, but that's not here before us today. Five people that are deceased. Uh, we have a gentleman that has a huge background uh, via uh, multiple states. Just going through some of the Wisconsin 
uh, cases. They're violent. We have substantial battery, DC, uh, strangulation, suffocation, resisting. Pending cases, which the statute uh, I just read references that I should consider, second degree um, reckless endangering safety while armed, felon in possession of a firearm. Attorney Opper told me that the gun apparently was a stolen handgun. Those are allegations. He's out on bail on that. Also out on bail on the Milwaukee case ending 4596, where he's charged with second degree reckless endangering safety, disorderly conduct and battery uh, and resisting. Uh, and then we get into Nevada, battery, the, the domestic violence, the sexual assault, the sex offender registration violation, and then the battery in Georgia. Other considerations are on WCS, their report indicates level four monitoring, which is the highest level of monitoring that we have. And in that report, it does indicate there have been uh, failures to appear other than two years old and then sentenced to incarceration prior, yes. Current violent felony, yes, or offense, yes. Penny charges at the time of this offense, yes. Prior misdemeanor convictions, yes. Prior felony convictions, yes. Prior violent conduct or conviction, yes. Prior violent convictions, three or more. So there have been missed court dates, although none uh, in the past two years, but then we just heard about a rather significant duration of a six month uh, stay in Georgia and custody there. In the recitation by uh, attorney Opper, we have things that cause the court some cause for concern, resisting. Again, these are things that would cause me to feel that this gentleman does not follow rules very well. Orders of the court, orders of society, resisting an officer. Uh, there's a bail jump in 2012. There's a bail jump uh, charged in the 4596 case. There is in the 2550 case, again, the felon in possession of a firearm. Uh, all those things are just societal legal issues, also orders of the court in some instances that are not being followed. While out on bail on two rather significant allegations, we are now faced with uh, five counts of first degree intentional homicide. So when I look at that, I look at the uh, the gravity of the offenses, the maximum possible penalties as a statute allows for likelihood of incarceration, which if you're found guilty of one or more of these, even one would put you in prison for the rest of your life. Uh, I believe you are a flight risk. There's failure to follow court orders. Uh, this allegation, although the motive is not known, and I'm not entitled to know what that is, but it looks like uh, there was either panic or whatever, or an intentional act for whatever reason, you don't do well under pressure. The Milwaukee County case talks about, as Attorney Opper indicated, you using a vehicle to run over another person with, their ve with your vehicle. So you don't respond well to what is common sense within our community, our society. So based on that, um, you're out on bail. Uh, those smallish bails that you were out on didn't do very well. Uh, before I, uh, I forget, uh, there is Marcy's Law. I understand that although there are uh, the statute and the constitution now defines um, deceased victims to allow for family members to speak. So attorney Opper, I was uh, told that nobody wishes to speak. We have a number of people from the families. And is that still your understanding? I'll just confirm that your honor. Thank you. 
Yes, I'm getting confirmation. Uh, nobody wishes to speak to the court at this time, but I thank you for your input. on your right. So, ma'am, I, I would ask that um, the victim witness individual from uh, the DA's office see who this is without divulging who it is and what relation to what victim she is. While that is being discussed, I uh, neglected to order DNA be taken. A sample of your DNA, sir, has not been taken. I am ordering that now. It may be expunged if you meet the criterion under the Wisconsin statute. Are you busy or are we? We're fine to proceed. She does not wish to do so. Okay. Thank you for checking. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the family is always welcome. You do under the law of the state of Wisconsin, as well as under the amended constitution, uh, have the right to speak at proceedings germane to the par particular proceedings that we're at. So uh, with that, um, I will uh, set bail. I have no problem with the bail being recommended by the state. I'm an old guy who has been doing this for almost 40 years, DA's office, criminal defense attorney, 17, 18 years as a uh, commissioner, both in Milwaukee and uh, now in Waukesha. The nature of this offense is shocking. Uh, actually the detail I was not expecting here today that two, two detectives, not lay people, detectives, uh, not only tried to stop this, but rendered an opinion that this was an intentional act. You're presumed innocent, sir, uh, but that's what the allegations are. Um, and I've not seen anything like this in my very long career. Um, it seems to be a very strong case for the state. Likelihood of incarceration, which is the other aspect of bail, is absolute if you are found guilty of any one of these, a multitude of them, it's a life imprisonment sentence that must be meted out. So I, I have no problem. I just, with, with that bail, it's extraordinarily high, but it's an extraordinarily big case. It's an extraordinarily uh, serious case with an extraordinary history of this gentleman um, of fleeing, of hurting people, of not following court orders, not following um, criminal laws, not f following just your societal norms. Um, so I know that that's extraordinarily high bail. Uh, it's warranted here and I am setting cash bail in the amount of $5 million. And with that, we're going to select a uh, preliminary hearing date. Attorney Perry, uh, time limits. Commissioner, we would be waiving time limits. Uh, we did off the record talk with the clerk prior to this and preliminarily set a date for January 14th at 9.15. Okay. 
Is that a Friday? It is. Okay. Yep, so that date, January 14th at 9th. Does that work for the state? So, Judge, it works for my calendar and Attorney Basie's calendar. We would ask for an opportunity to confer with any victims that wish to attend. Obviously, that cannot be done uh, with haste here this afternoon. Um, so if we could perhaps just notify the court by Monday if we have any significant challenges. I think if the court can anticipate the ability of live streaming the event, that may assist with some scheduling conflicts as well. But I'm available, Attorney Bates is available, uh, Detective Casey is available. So yes, that is our request for that date. Okay, why don't we take that date and then we can work out the details as far as live stream or otherwise we'll talk to um, Madam Clerk, uh, Monica Paz. And we'd see what we could do. So with that, uh, anything else, Attorney Hopper? No, sir. And then Attorney Perry, anything further? No, nothing else. All right, very good. We can be adjourned. So I, I do want to commend the audience. I know this is very highly emotional. I want to commend the defense for doing a fine job as well as uh, Attorney Opper and Attorney Gazy. So folks, I know this was very difficult. You handled yourself very, very well. I would ask that you continue on in that vein. If you do choose to come to f future court dates, you're always welcome back. I do appreciate how you all handled yourself today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner.